about those three debutants making it into uh, the, the, the semis, the, semis the, the odds of um, a new name are on the, the, the tour final, what, what, what are the odds? Well, uh, you, you, do, you have to look at um, Grigor Dimitrov. Okay. So we're playing um, Jack Sock, the ball game. You have to pay him some attention. Um, he's been touted as the next big Roger thing. Federer. Mm -hmm. And the uh, next big thing, like you rightly mentioned. But um, for Roger Federer to be in the mix, you just can't look beyond him. He's the all-time um, favorite to actually click um, the um, season-ending title. Mm -hmm. But um, Jack Sock as well has made a case for himself. I recall him getting the better of Marin Selic mm -hmm. and even David Goffin, yeah. who did go get one over the Munich team today, says a lot about um, his staying power. But overall, amongst the four, he does have to look in the direction of Ambroja Federer. And maybe if he fails to come up with um, his A game, then um, Grigor Dimitrov. Okay. All right, so we leave it at dead. Uh, so we'll watch for the semifinals. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, in that one when the semifinals uh, are played. And uh, we'll see who will blink first. All right, let's quickly move on on the show and talk about football. Some say king of all sports. I don't know if you agree. You can talk to us about that. But let's quickly talk about Nigeria's under-20 women's side. The Falconets uh, having... Uh, a job to do tomorrow uh, against Morocco. A lot of the, the first leg result uh, surprised some people. Um, let me ask you, Kyle, were you surprised that uh, we went there and uh, the best we could get was a draw? It didn't come as a surprise okay. because um, at some point other countries would play catch up. Okay. And um, the North Africans and South Africans and even the West Africans mm -hmm. are doing that. Uh, Almost always, we say it's a given that Nigeria will qualify, yep. but we should expect um, some feisty uh, battle from other competitors. All right. We got that against Morocco in the first leg. It was the equalizing goal from the foot of Rashida Tajibari that ensured that the, uh, the spoils uh, were shared. But coming back now to Benin tomorrow by 4 p.m., we want to give it to Nigeria, but I expect that uh, the Moroccans will give Nigeria a run for the money. But over 90 minutes, you can look beyond the Falconets. Okay. All right, let's listen to the coach of the team, Christopher Danjuma, what he's been saying ahead of that crucial game uh, that will take them into the last round uh, of the qualifiers, all things being equal if they win. So let's listen to him and come back for more on Sports Tonight. Uh, the situation has been great uh, because all of us know the importance of Nigeria being in the World Cup in 2018 in France. So everybody's heated up and everybody's on fire come Saturday to make sure we make Nigeria proud. The motivation is we have a goal. Nigeria must be in the World Cup. Nigeria has always been in the World Cup. And Nigeria has not missed any World Cup from the inception in uh, consigned under 20 category. So the motivation is to be there. And as you can see that the, the senior Eagles is doing a lot and we want to keep the pace very ready mentally and um, physically, psychologically, they're very, very ready. The expectation of the game is we have to come, go past Morocco which is the first step, and that's what we're doing with all our strength, all our concentration, and um, that is what we want to do. All right, that is what we want to do with all our strength, with all our focus. Uh, Christopher Dandema there, um, letting us know that um, they know what is at stake, and only victory will suffice. Um, do you see any other outcomes tomorrow? Well, it has to go the way of Nigeria, if I'm um, to sound like I'm patriotic. But I'm on the uh, pitch patriotism. of play. But on the pitch of play, you should expect some um, battle. Uh, the Moroccans want to make a statement. You know, they say, when dog bites man, it's no news. Perfectly normal. But when man bites dog. The reverse. So yeah. when the reverse is the case, then it will make the headlines. But uh, with um, Fola Shadi Jamilusi back in the team, who supports um, Rashida Ajibade, most definitely. Some firepower. Some firepower up front. And in the middle of the park, we know that Anam Imo is there. Should expect our victory coming the way of Nigeria. All then right. in the next, uh, going to the next round to meet mm -hmm. either Burundi or South Africa. All right. So any of those ones should be ours for the taking. Hopefully that is. All right. Let's um, quickly move on. We told you earlier that right about now, the draws for uh, the 2018 African Nations Championship are currently going on. If anything happens, we'll let you know. At the end of today, the home eagles will know the teams they will uh, be coming up against in that tournament that's going to uh, take place um, in Morocco, January. And... Um, 
at this chant level, you can't really say you are afraid of anybody. Even the lesser known teams are the ones that are more uh, more dangerous, and the so-called big names sometimes um, t tend to fizzle out. But um, how do how do Nigeria cope with changing team game after game? One guy does well in the league, he plays two matches. It's off to Europe. The coach has to start again. One guy is a I mean, is the main striker. He plays a couple of games. It's gone. Uh, the, the back line that the coach relies on, somebody gets. I mean, how do you, I mean, for, in the case of Nigeria, that basically uh, is uh, the problem. Not finding those players, but keeping those players together. Well, it's about um, consistency and um, the team gelling together. Like you rightly remarked. Um, it's about our players getting an opportunity in one obscure part of Europe and off uh, they go. But I still want to believe that the core of the team would still remain by the time um, the Chan competition starts um, in January in uh, Morocco. And um, for Nigeria, like you did mention earlier, one should expect the unexpected. If you recall in Rwanda 2016, no one expected Guinea to defeat Nigeria. Yeah. That happened. Right. And in 2014, we lost our first game against Mali and went all the, all the way to grab the bronze. So we're keeping our heads down and expecting that um, all things are equal against us. We can go as far as possible. We've not won this tournament before, and I'm very sure. Uh, our best performance here was uh, the bronze that we won under Coach Sevinkeshi in 2014. Um, Maybe one or two of those players are um, still around uh, in the country. But now that we know our foes, what are you expecting? But apart from Rabi Ali, every other player has used the Ligi Kiyosei somewhere in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Chigozi Agbi, <laughs> I don't know where he is. <laughs> Chigozi Agbi, Solomon Kwambe. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the crop of players we have read about now from the players from Aqua United, Ariwa Chuku, um, Afiz Aremu, Steven Eze, who just joined them, Kano Pillars, Ronjo Alon mm -hmm. And if, um, he's, uh, if FC Fanyubago keeper is in one, is stays. Around. If he stays, he should still be in the mix. Looking at the group, on paper, you would say Rwanda are lightweight. But like I did say earlier, you underrate these teams at your, peril. Your own, yeah. at your own peril. Libya, yes, they look like they're going to give us a run for our money. Mm -hmm. And Equatorial like Guinea, yeah, they're on the rise. So Nigeria should take each game at a time and hope for the best and put their best foot forward. Hopefully, we should make it be on the All goal. right, all right.